they walk in that room, they become yours. And you got this, this energy inside your soul that says, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. Hey, y'all, when you get back, kick some butt. I'll see you in the winner's circle celebrating your victory. Let's go, 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 let's go. Let's do this, let's do this, let's go, let's go. Thank you, everybody. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 206 of the AP in New Principles Academy. I'm a little late and I'm sweating like a dog, but that's all right. Tell somebody we're here. Let me see who's in the building today. We got Sharon right here, Mona Obamolak is in the building, John Few, Rodney Richardson, Takesha High, Jamet McEachern, uh, Akimo Dawson, Grace Castaneda, Carla Sadler, uh, Ar uh, Audrey Adams, Lysandra Brackens is in the building, Fres uh, Fresine is in the building out there in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. We got Angelina Owens, Arlette Johnson, who was with us, Connecticut AP, assistant principal of the year she was with us last week if you missed it then you need to go back and watch that one tashika truesdale is in the building i'm not gonna be too long with these because i'm a little late today i'm gonna tell you why in a little while um where we at where we at miss miss haley is in the building dr rella hicks is in the building uh where we at thomas holmes is in the building hit that share button hit that retweet let them know we late but we're here scott wiley's in the building ronald pew is in the building marcia poe AP Patrick Lawrence is in the building. Christy Rouse is in the building. All these North Carolina folks, I, I love you. I love seeing you here. Yolanda McKinney's in the building. Oh, Principal Otis Kitchen II is in the building. Charlena Hottie is in the building. Tasha Hicks, September. Devon Vance, I see you. Jacqueline Harriet, I see you. Rashad Davis uh, out there in Vegas. We got Dot McKee Vegeta. That's Principal Dot McKee Vegeta's in the building. John Herrick's. I see you. MPA Jaguar is better known as Josh Tovar is in the building. Bev Hill, Tasha Hicks, Kimberly o uh, O'Donohue, Melissa Jones Chunu is checking in. Jocelyn Nelson, I see you. Demetrius Scott, my brother. That's Dr. Demetrius Scott. I see you. I see you. I see you. Let me see if I got any these local Jersey homies to close it out because we got to get started. I started late, man. I started late. Where are we at? I see you. Sean Hurt is in the building. I didn't hear you, but I know you were dropping them gems at. um. At 10 o'clock facebook live i don't know if josh is still doing this right now so i kind of i didn't tell my, my 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 colleagues but i'm calling these saturdays now until josh gets back up strong on sundays we call in saturday super saturday with uh sean hurt at 10 o'clock my uh create and educate with dr uh tammy taylor and, and dr sheikah houston at 10 30 and then myself at 10 55 we call it super saturday super saturdays right and then when josh gets back on online then we go back to fantastic four so josh let me know what's going on i see the nc mle folks are in the building so good to see you where's my jersey folks jersey folks i don't see anybody from jersey that I, i'm aware of they might be recovering from the earthquake i don't know what's happening so let me let me um let me say to for, to all of you formally now, oh my God, I'm sweating, man. I don't know how these players wore these flannel shirts, but we're going to get through it. Let me say to everybody, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 206 of the AP and New Principles Academy. I had to look at my notes to make sure it's 206, man. I can't believe it. Hey, y'all. I don't know about you, right? Let me tell you something. I'm sweating. Let me tell you why. Not because this room is hot. <laughs> the technology didn't work, man. Man, I'm, we going back and forth with these folks. I need this technology to work. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm doing a keynote today in this jersey. I'm doing a keynote and a breakout in this room. And the, the, the technology wasn't working, man. And I'm like, oh, my God. This was supposed to be working. I got to do this broadcast. This is what I do. 206 weeks. This is what I do. I do it on time. 
wasn't working. I packed my stuff, man. I was driving back to that hotel, knowing I got the keynote. I'm driving, I was getting ready to drive back to the hotel, do this about a half hour later, right? And then my man walked in here, gave me these passwords and got me up here, man. So I just haven't settled down yet. So, so, so yesterday, you know, it's 1023. I know the exact time because you've been hearing it on the news all day. So it's 1023 and my house starts rumbling like, uh, like I yelled up to my wife, Kim, what's going on up there? And she's like, I don't know. I ran down to the basement, see if the dryer was about to explode. That wasn't even on. I'm like, the furnace, that wasn't, that, I mean, that wasn't on. I didn't need it. I'm like, what is this? I'm running outside, all the neighbors outside. Oh, my God. So it took a long time to settle down, y'all. And because, you know, I'm not from the West Coast. They live with these. I'm from the East Coast. I ain't never experienced an earthquake in my life. And the one we had in 2011, I probably was somewhere on the road speaking. So I don't even remember it. They just keep saying we had it in 2011. So I'm saying that between the earthquake and then this, this technology thing, because those of you who are regulars here, you know how serious I take this platform. Those of you who are not regulars, you wouldn't know that. But those of you who are family, you regulars, you've been rocking with me. For, for hundreds of weeks, right? You know how serious this thing is to me. You know I paid $1,300 when I was on vacation in Cancun in order to get Wi-Fi and a meeting room. I paid that much money so that I could broadcast, right? And I don't get paid for this. It's not like I get compensated for this, but I take it that seriously. So I'm saying all that to say, and, and yes, I'm not in my home, but I'm not in a hotel. So I'm going to let you know that despite everything I just said to you, despite all that, I'm still on fire. Woo! Yeah, man. That's how I'm feeling, man. So stuff happens, but it ain't going to douse my flame. And it can't douse your flame. That's the whole point. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about you. That's why you check in. I just provide the platform. I just provide these, these dynamite guests I bring on. And I provide when I when I talk a little something, something, right? But the bottom line is that, you know, y'all check in for a reason. And I'm 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 here to meet that 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 need, man. That's 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 why I do this. They gave me this wobbly table, so I gotta make sure I don't lean on it, right? So, y'all, let me let me get let me get through this um this rundown to the assistant principals out there. Yesterday was the end of of assistant principal week, so salute to all the APs out there. Hopefully, you were acknowledged in your schools. I know a lot of you were on spring break, so hopefully they'll take care of that when you get back. But salute to you, assistant principals week. But we know that like Black History Month is not just a month. Assistant Principals Week is not just a week. Assistant Principals Week is every week, right? Y'all matter. You matter big time. And if you didn't hear that from somebody, you hearing it from me. You matter. Make sure you go to Facebook or Twitter and check out my, my comments that I wrote. I wrote a little commentary about the AP. But then also go to um, my, my social media platforms, Facebook or, um, or Twitter or Instagram. And you'll see the video that I did, the recording I did with ASCD as we closed out assistant principal week. So that we posted that, they posted it yesterday. I was on a six hour flight, so I, I didn't even know about it. So I posted it about midnight last night, your time, right? So uh, make sure you check that out. Shout out to High Point University, cohort seven aspiring leaders, man. We had a great time, man. If any of you are on here, shout out to each of you. We had a great time just talking leadership, talking um, talking instructional leadership uh, in High Point, High Point, North Carolina. Shout out to um, Trinidad and Tobago, ASCD. Got to hang out with them virtually. <laughs> Wasn't in Trinidad on this one, but I've been with them in the past. But uh, shout out to them. Jennifer Doyle, who was a guest of ours about three weeks ago. Uh, good to talk to them. Shout out to the Council of Black Administrators uh, annual Black Child Conference, which is, which is where I am right now as we speak. So I'm looking forward to doing the afternoon keynote, a breakout in here. And... Um, and that'll be later on this morning and this afternoon. Welcome to the first timers. But if this is your first time, it means you missed 205 Saturdays so or sessions. So make sure you go to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, AP and New Principals Academy, and become a part of the family 
uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, though. We got about 20, just about a 21,000 subscribers. We're getting close to it. So that's a good thing. But let's get it up to about 25,000 people um, worldwide, or at least U.S., that uh, subscribe to the channel and take part in all the information that's being shared. School Leadership Institute with Principal Kefele, July 9 and 10. Make sure that you go to principalkefele.com. Scroll down. You'll see the registration uh, link and register and join us in Houston, July 9 and 10. We're talking leadership. This is uh, this is not a conference with a bunch of other sessions. I am the only session. So that'll be two big days, July 9 and 10. Man, I need a I need a paper towel, y'all. Um, and then um, Black Educators Rock Conference, July 18 through 21, also in Houston. That's going to be big time. So you, we usually do this in Florida, but we're doing it in Houston. So that'll be July 18 through 21. You can go to my website, principalcafele.com and register, or you can go to rockconference.org. Once again, rockconference.org. That'll be in Houston, July 18 through 21. My books, the AP 50, System Principal 50, the Aspiring Principal 50, the Principal 50, the uh, assistant principal identity, my new one, and is my school a better school because I lead it? Those are my leadership books. Make sure you go to Amazon or ASCD.org and get yourself a copy if you don't have a copy already. Um, and then lastly, be sure to like and follow my AP and New Principals Academy Facebook page, right? That's the page. That's the Facebook page that's devoted to this platform. And that's that. That's that's it for that. But let me give you this quick monologue. I know we came on late, but I got to do my monologue um, real quick, y'all. My monologue is called, and I got all the sweat in my eyes, so don't mind me. Woo, it's hot in here. My monologue is called Your Foundation. Once again, Your Foundation. And I did, you know, I do these YouTube shorts. They're called Midweek Fire every Wednesday. They're 60 second videos just to give folks some little fire throughout the course of the week, in the middle of the week, right? Or whenever they watch them. And, and I spoke about this then, but I want to just give it a little bit more, a little, little extra something, something, because I, 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 I'm not going to get cut off at 60 seconds now, as I do with, uh, with, with the YouTube shorts. That's what it's designed to do. It's just a 60 second video. But I'm saying this. I'm asking you the question. What does your leadership stand upon? What is the foundation of your leadership? I want you to think about this and then we'll bring up my guest. When you build a building such as the one I'm in, such as the ones you're in, if you're in a building, any kind of structure, any kind of building, any type of house, it starts with the foundation. And if that foundation is not strong, if that foundation is not solid, that structure, regardless of how solid it may be, at some point it's going to collapse. It's coming down because the foundation is so flimsy. The foundation is so weak. So you've got to make sure that the foundation is solid, that the foundation is strong, which increases the probability that the structure will survive. Well, your leadership works the same way. What is your foundation? The foundation of your leadership. What is it? Right. How do you define it? Do you stand on it? Do you walk within it? See, your foundation is essentially your why, your reason, your because, your purpose. That's your foundation. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I say it all the time here, and I probably will continue to say it all the time in different variations. I went through storms as a teacher. I went through storms as a principal. That's going to be my keynote address here today. I went through storms. I went through battles. I went through wars but they didn't destroy me because my foundation was so strong. It was solid. So, 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 so you, you, you know, I might have to duck and weave and you might even get me a couple of times. You might, you might get a shot in, you might get a shot in, you might connect on a couple of things, but, but, but you ain't going to destroy me because my foundation was too strong. I'm not falling through no cracks. See, when the foundation is not strong, then the structure can begin to collapse by way of cracks in the, in the foundation, like cracks in the armor, kinks in the armor, I should say, right? So, no, no. So, my foundation was my purpose, my why, my reason, my because. 
So you might shake me, you might rattle me, but you will not destroy me because my foundation is just too darn strong. That's where it's at, y'all. So I'm just asking you, how strong, how solid is your foundation? My mirror, where's my mirror, man? I got it, I got it. I don't know if it's clean, but it's here. Go to your mirror, somebody, and ask yourself, how strong is my foundation? Will the work break me? Will circumstances break me? Will certain people break me? Or am I rooted, grounded, planted in my why? That matters, somebody. Make sure your foundation's strong. See, I can't get all that in on the YouTube short. It's 60 seconds and it shuts off, right? So, uh, but check out the short anyway. Hey, y'all, I got... Uh, Man, I got a I got a superstar guest, man. Man, I got I got a superstar guest here. So let me let me let me bring my guest up here and let me change this background. I, I keep forgetting. I need to write a note to myself. Change the background. There we go. Hey, Dr. Quisha Tillman, how you doing? I am hype. I am Woo. excited. I've been living in excitement all week. I'm ready Woo. to rock and go, rock and roll. I'm on fire too. Let me tell y'all something, man, before we get to this bio. And she sent me a short bio, so I don't have to read to y'all all morning. Let me tell y'all something. When I was going through my stuff this morning with this technology, I'm still sweating, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm shaking it, though. My foundation was strong, right? But I was ticked off. Yes. But I had Dr. Tillman on the phone. I wasn't calling the doctor. I was calling her by her first name at that point. And that's I'm fine. Like, I'm like, Quisha, right? So she's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm here. I said, no, no, you don't, don't go nowhere. <laughs> now, she's only on the phone. She can't help me with a thing. But I said, right now, in this space that I'm in right now, you my only friend. <laughs> I ain't got nothing else. I'm in California. I don't know nobody. I said, you my only friend. So I just need your moral support. Just stay on this phone. So I, I could see her name there. And that's and that was what was getting me through while I was trying to deal with, like, how am I going to do this? If I drive to that hotel, the walk to the parking lot is long enough as it is. Then I got to drive. Then I got to do this valet thing. So it's not like I could park it and then run upstairs. I got to wait for the valet. All that stuff just to get this broadcast in. So you never know when somebody is right there today that you need them to be at your side to get through whatever your storm. So I'm telling you. I, I went right back to my my opening now. I'm telling you, somebody, you better make sure that you got good people around you. You better make sure that you're not fighting battles by yourself, even if it's just moral support. Right. Just you know that that somebody's there somewhere. Right. As opposed to you all by yourself, isolated and you trying to figure this thing out and and and, and stronger heads sometimes prevail. But you got to have them there with you in the fight with you. So enough that, y'all. I'm vain. I'm vain. Don't hey, be finished. <laughs> you tip it toeing in my sermon today. I love it. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I saw it for what it was, Principal Kefele. I know you were saying it. You were saying it. The enemy is big mad that I got this platform and I'm about to tell you how good God is. Woo! That's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> And I'm I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Let me read this bio. This does not capture the story, y'all. She sent me the short one, so I just went with it. Originally from Clinton, North Carolina, Sampson County, joined Cumberland County Schools in 2002 as an exceptional children's education teacher and had been the assistant principal for six years. She is currently the principal of 71st Classical Middle School in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She has garnered multiple honors such as scholarships and awards throughout the 18 years in education, including 2022 National Outstanding AP of the Year. She's also a member of multiple professional organizations, which include uh, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated and has served as a board member of for a Mother's Love men Mentoring Program, Fayetteville State University's Principal Advisory Committee, rebranded uh, re rebranded NC Ed, and the current president of 
Cumberland County Association of Principals and Assistant Principals, CCAPAP, recently published two books, Untapped Power, Black Women's EQ, Superpowers and Leadership Ascent, and A Love That Shatters Barriers, A Mother's Relentless Battle for Her Autistic Son. I probably should have ordered them both so that I could have come out of there as well, but we got you here. And, and, and you know, I got to tell the fam out there, fam, by the way, hit the share button, hit the retweet, tag all them principal groups, let them know we're here, we're live, and we're going we, we gonna, we gonna to talk about a lot of things. But I got to tell y'all something. got to tell you, she didn't know I was going to say this. In this bio, it says she has garnered multiple honors such as scholarships and awards throughout her 18 years in education. Let me tell you what was not in this bio that I read. What was not in this bio was anything about AP whether it be state, whether it be national, outstanding AP of the year. And I found that curious. And I didn't even call it an ask or should I put it in? I just put it in. But it, it speaks to Dr. Tillman's, I guess it speaks to her humility because she, she just said, I got some honors, but she didn't say like, um, including, right? So I said, wow, I said, well, I'm going to write it in, right? So, uh, because it's big time, right? So, uh, I, I guess I'll ask you the question. Why didn't you have it in? I mean, I, I just feel like people find out. <laughs> You'll find out. It's there, <laughs> out there in the world. I have a whole website. Everything you need to know, I mean, you know, it's out there. I hear that, man. That's special. It's bigger than the awards anyway. You're making me want to pull all my stuff off my bio. <laughs> All right, y'all, hit the share button, hit the retweet, man. We're going to get going here. You know, um, I got this question. I've never asked anybody this question before, Doc. Mm -hmm. Did, you know, you, you've, been a, you, you've been a leader for a while. This, is this your first or second year as a principal? It's my second year as principal. Second, that's what I mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. so, so, so between the six years AP and then the, the two years as principal, here's my question. Did you choose leadership or did leadership choose you oh man that's a great great question and it chose me mm. i have um my story began as an ec teacher i was an exceptional children's teacher i didn't go to um uh, a regular education program i was a sociology major with a minor in social work and so my whole aspect was to go into the mental health background mental health field and what ended up happening is I did work a few um, odd jobs in a mental health ca capacity, but I had a sorority sister who um, wanted me to ride with her to go get a teaching job. Alpha Lavasa, I'll never forget. I rode with her and at the end, I ended up getting a job and mm. she did. Wow. But I looked at that as she was my blessing to propel me into education. So my first job was an EC teacher teaching cross categorical um, scholars. So I had uh, SED, AU, I had visually impaired, hearing impaired, I had um, behavior concerns, all in one elementary setting from kindergarten to fifth. Um, I moved from that aspect because my son, my oldest son, Desmond, he is my why. He is the whole reason why I stayed in the profession. It led for me um, trying to find resources for him, me trying to understand how to help the students and the families that I was serving in the EC role. It just propelled and it skyrocketed until I reached um, a high school. I think it was at, I think it was at Cape Fear High School where I was. Um, I had a mentor. That's why I wanted to talk about mentorship later on, but it's so important to have, like you said earlier, good people around you. Yeah. Because my mentor saw my capacity when I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And so from there, different conversations um, was had, and I end up going back to school for a master's in school administration. Mm -hmm. When I tell you leadership found me, that was not, I was so 
set on being a teacher with a PhD. And that's my career until God opened up the door for me to go elsewhere. But with the challenges that I received with my son and trying to find him resources, um, the whole story there with trying to help the families that I was currently serving and trying to get better in the profession and make a difference. Leadership was my next route. Yeah, they saw something in me and they was like, Quisha, well, you can, you can help more families if you go in this route, as yeah. opposed to staying in a self-contained classroom for the rest of your life. Get out there, see what's out there. Let it, let, because you know, there's always that, that stigma when it comes to leadership, especially being a black woman in leadership. And I'll talk about that later. But my son helped me to see that the potential that I had, and of course, my, of course, my mentors, all those, all those facets just helped me to see that it was a bigger role that I needed to play. And leadership was my next role. So I did reluctantly went into that program and here I am today. And I just think about all the things I would have missed out on had I not listened to those good mentors I had at that time. So, so let me ask you this. So, so you, you've got mentors and perhaps others who see certain qualities in you that you're not necessarily seeing in real time in yourself. Right. What was it that, how was it that at some point you said, maybe they're right? Where, where, where is that part kicking? Man. After people tell you so many times, it's, I put it like this. God gives you signals. He gives you signs. There's always miracle signs and wonders everywhere around you if you're paying attention. So after hearing from two mentors, Quisha, you need to do this. Quisha, oh, man, I, I like what you're doing in your classroom with your scholars. But what if you did this? Them helping me to see myself in a light that I was not tapped into, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, light bulb moment. Okay, Quisha, well, maybe I should do it. Now, did I want to go and seek another degree, Principal Kefele? I didn't. I mean, I just made it through one master's and a whole PhD. So I'm still recovering <laughs> from receiving that PhD. So I really was reluctant to go back to school. Um, but I'm so glad I did. I met so many good people so my cohort that we keep in touch to this day so yeah. i'm glad that i did you know take their advice i'm glad that um everything that i was exposed to everyone in my life every incident all of it prepared for this day love it love it you know we were um we were in in your state together not long ago at the north carolina middle level educators conference and I, I was I had the, the privilege of being in your session with one of your teachers, teacher of the year. And you told a story of when you were in elementary school and you you ran for student council. Tell us that story, because I want to I want to build on that for our audience, our, our fam that's watching today. Uh, tell us about that story. OK, so I got to paint the picture and let me just go ahead and let you know my family. Everybody is here surrounded. So you may hear all kind of noises. It's okay. But it's OK. It's OK. It's love. You can go on upstairs. So I got to give you some background knowledge. I am a product of low income housing, single parent family, still surrounded with love. There is no way based on statistics right now, that somebody like me, Quisha, <laughs> with the name Quisha, coming from Dogwood Circle in Clinton, Samson Homes, two low-income housing projects, should be where I am today. But yeah. I wanted to say that to say, those teachers knew where I came from. Those people, my classmates, they knew where I came from. Their experience was traumatic because I believed at that time, fifth grade, that I had what it took to be a secretary for my school, my class. I wanted to be the secretary. My uncle helped me create posters. Um, we had a whole slogan. It was beautiful. I was so excited, so excited. 
But the problem was I was alone in that. I didn't have anybody other than my family to believe and see me in that role. I had teachers. The story that I told during the M NC MLE conference was I had teachers who looked at where I came from, summed me up into a statistic and didn't even, didn't even regard me as the potential of what I wanted to be that secretary. So what they did was sabotage me, Principal Kofele. They sabotaged. They had already picked and choose who they want, no matter how much I campaigned, no matter how much I wanted. I went around and spoke to not just the teachers, but my, my uh, peers. It was already a numbers game. It was already set up. I had teachers, two teachers that informed my peers who which came back and told me that I don't want her to get it. I want this person to get it. Mm. And that scarred me mm. for a long time. Mm. That is what makes our kids feel like they're not enough, that they're not capable. And so I come on this plane, Lord, I was trying not to cry. I'm, all, I'm a cry baby, Christmas yes. baby, I am. People right. that know me, I am. I'm sure there's all this. I relive that moment. I relive that moment. And it's real to me because there are still people out there who stigmatize those issues that come from Dogwood Circle, those issues that come from Samson Homes. And they already put us in a box and they don't think that we're worthy. I did not win. It's okay. It was already fixed. But I want to tell you how good God is because he made up for that trauma that I had in fifth grade, not winning secretary of my class. He allowed me to go on, live a life, go through experiences, gain friendships, mentors, assistants, people to help make me better, wanted to see me do well. And now you're looking at, you, you want me to name it, now you're looking at not only Cumberland County's Assistant Principal of the Year for 2022. Yes. I went on to state, went on to national recognition. If God don't give you back what you lost, I don't know what will. Mm. He did it. And he's still doing it. Just the mere fact that I'm on your broadcast right now. No, but I'm not better than anybody. But one thing I do is I will acknowledge God because he, you talked about foundation. What's your foundation? He's my foundation. So I know why we had those technical difficulties because yeah. I was ready yeah. to give him all the glory for yeah. everything I receive. And I don't take it for granted. You preach, you preach. Yeah. I love it. Hey, listen, I was on, um, I was on your school website. And because when I when I when I when I bring on a guest, I, I look wherever I can find information. I'm looking, you know, without mm -hmm. calling the guests and asking or search. You know, I just find things. And I read your personal uh, message to the parents and community. And there were two things that that really stood out for me. And I want to I want to share both of them. You said my personal motto is excellence, empowerment and leading with the heart. It was the leading with the heart that really grabbed my attention, right? I got a two-part question to ask you. We, I know, I know you sent me them talking points, and I'm gonna get to them at some point. But I had so much. I was on that plane last night watching the game, but also drawing up this this agenda. And I said, mm -hmm. man, let me or, or tweaking the agenda. It's already made back last week. But I said, I wanna, um, I wanna talk about some things. So when you say leading from the heart. What are you telling the fam out here watching right now? What, what are you saying to them? What does that mean? What does that look like? So leading with the heart is empathy, empathy, empathy. I can't talk about it more. I mean, everywhere I go, that was one of the other sessions that I talked about during um, that experience, that speaking engagement at NCMLE is empathy, emotional intelligence. I feel as though there are principles in the facet of, of emotional intelligence that line up to the word. 
And so when I talk about empathy, which is an element of emotional intelligence, I want leaders, aspiring leaders to know that leading with the heart, meaning don't forget what you've been through. Don't forget what it was like when you were in the teaching class, in the classroom. Don't forget what it was like when you had to stay up all night, write lesson plans. You don't, you don't forget that you have 25 to 30 people looking at you every 90 minutes, every 45 minutes that people are pulling from you, you know, and they want you, you're instructing everything that it takes to be an effective instructional leader. That's what teachers are. Yeah. So when I talk about leading from the heart, I mean, don't forget those things that propelled you to where you are now. Don't forget your foundation. That's the thing. Don't forget where God has brought you from because I believe that promotion does come from him. So if you're in um, a leadership role in any facet, any arena, not just education, but any arena, that came from God. That means he found you worthy. That means you in some way already are equipped to lead his people. And we all are his people. So don't forget that. Don't forget that we've been sick, you know, that we have gone through situations and circumstances that build our character. And I always think about it. Life will life. You know, life be life. And that, <laughs> that should be put on the shirt. Yeah. So we all <clears throat> we all have gone through something at one time or another. And what does not kill you? I know it's. It's a real simple statement. What doesn't kill you make you stronger, but it's true. If you're still standing that you use that as a testimony, don't forget. And you help and recognize it in others. So leading from the heart is me saying that it's okay to be empathetic. It's okay to love on your staff if they allow it. Me saying leading with the heart means I see you, I care for you, I see something special in you, and I'm going to try to foster that as much as you will let me. Wow. Leading with the heart is for those scholars that we serve each and every day in our buildings, not ready to throw them out of our building whenever they cross the line or commit an infraction. I can't do it. Leading with the heart means sit down, take time to find out what's going on with these scholars before you have to do such an intrusive type of act. Leading with the heart means recognize that some of our parents are going through certain things in their life, which causes them to sometimes come to our schools in a rant. But we've already been equipped. That means God has already showed you. He's already charged you. You have everything you need in you to de-escalate that problem. Go work it. You can do it. Leader from the heart is don't forget where you come from. Don't forget your foundation. So let me give it this twist. Can leading from the heart be taught or is it innate? I believe leader from the heart with empathy. And this is something that I try to teach and instruct others whenever I'm coaching, whenever I have those opportunities. We all come with some form of empathy. We all have a level of it already inside of us. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just like a muscle. And I always tell people, I love Angela Bassett arms, Lord, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle Obama, Charlize Theron. I love it. I love that they're toned, they fit. But what did it take to get that fit muscle? I can't lift three pounds and do ten, uh, a set of three, 10 reps one day and think my arms is going to look like theirs. It takes constant work. It takes constant care. It takes constant exercise to build that muscle. And it's the same thing with empathy. Empathy means that we got to build that muscle because some people have high levels and some people don't. But I know for a fact that it lines up with everything that the word has said when it comes to us loving one another. So if we can ever tap into that empathy and build that muscle, then we'll see, we'll start to see better results, better performance in our staff and our children. 
Love y'all got to forgive me. I got to put my headphones in because my my son, I guess that energy is t- he tapping into the energy and he turned up too. Oh no, don't worry about it. you. Good. <laughs> You know, the, the, the other part of that, that statement that stood out for me, you said there's a large emphasis on treating each other as family here. Let me mm-hmm. say that again for the fam out there. There's a large emphasis on treating each other as family here. I, to, to those of us that understand the significance of building family in school, then, then, then we get that. But I want, I want you to speak to the ones that don't understand. Right. What does that sort of leadership look like when there's this emphasis on building a family within the school community? So what that looks like is being as transparent as you can. So with leadership, we know that we can't disclose every little decision that that's being made or everything that goes on to, into a school. As school executives, we are charged with going on. We have to make decisions. But when we have the opportunity to bring in our representatives, our grade level reps, our SID reps, um, the leaders in the school, bring them in. Help them, let them help you in determining what decisions need to be made by the school. For me, family, and I came from a school that it was, it took a while to build that type of culture as with any school, but that's what I'm accustomed to. I'm accustomed to we all hands on deck. If something is going on at the school, we got an event, we have um, guests in the house, whatever is going on in our house, because it's our house. They're all hands on deck to get it done. And I go with that philosophy, many hands make light work. And so with the family aspect, I want us, not that we have to <laughs> be best friends, you know, and, and but it's, it's an atmosphere where you're comfortable. You're not in your car dreading to get out your car. Mm. But you're jumping out of your car because you know today I'm going to make a difference in somebody's life. Today I can lean and depend on my coworker right here going to get me through. I can't wait to see her. I can't wait to see him. But family is just that. And even in blood, blood with blood relatives, we don't always get along. But nobody better not mess with them. (laughs) <laughs> and so with a family aspect in school, we can bring those same concepts into our school environment. I tell people all the time, if you have a leader that is willing to um, collaborate with you, to, willing to bring you in, to empower you, help you to be better, you better tell God thank you. Because that's not that's not everywhere. Everybody doesn't have that experience. So to me, a family atmosphere is we're learning learning from each other. I don't have all the answers and I don't want to. I want for my other people to come in to help chime in, make decisions on our house. So that's where I come from with that, the family aspect. That's what I'm still trying to build as a second year principal in 71st classical middle school. Go Knights. You know, that's what I want. And I'm going to work. I'm going to continue to do what it takes to work to get it where I want it to be. Because I don't, I mean, that. What, how would you feel? You. What's the worst thing about Sundays is you're already planning for Monday. Yeah. And for many people, you dread Sunday. Yeah. Why? Because Monday's coming. Yeah. I don't want that to be the atmosphere that I have. So I really try to do things that um, empower others to think out the box in terms of bring boosting morale in our building, um, gatherings. I have teachers who, you know, um, take the liberty of doing our hosting or advising our extracurricular activities. We don't have sports at our school. We have academics as their sports because we have that classical model. So we have teachers who not only teach all day, but they 
want to ensure that our scholars are prepared for when they go to the battle of the books, when they go to forensics, when they go to Science Olympiad, Star Wars STEM, Art Club, we have Pearls of Virtue, all the things that we have in our school. We want our scholars to feel like they are well equipped. So when they go to these state competitions, district competitions, that they feel like they're winners. Yeah. 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 Wow. Great stuff. Great stuff. Let's talk about this assistant principalship before we slide into the um into some of these talking points. Um, I always say at the core of the assistant principalship, and let me let me move the boss educator out the way there. Boss educator, hey, yeah. she's another favorite. She the go-to. Yeah. She the go-to. Oh yeah. my goodness. Thank you for joining. Yeah, she's getting it done. Um, at the core of the assistant principalship is to assist the principal, not lead the school, right? However, when an assistant principal is in a role with a principal that understands his or her role in fullness, then that assistant principal does more than assisting the principal. That assistant principal is a valued other administrator, school leader in the building. So, so with that said, you obviously did more than assisting. You ultimately, it culminated into you being recognized as a, as a 2022 National Outstanding Assistant Principal. And just to remind the folks out here who tuned in late, that was what she earned a couple of years ago. She's a principal now, right? So I just want to make sure that everybody's clear there. But here's my question to you. What was it about your work that you would receive or garner that kind of recognition? To be honest, it won't just me. It wasn't just my work. Now, I do believe that faith without works is dead, but I got to give God the glory for that. Because I'm telling you, there is no way. Did he leave? No, I'm here. I put you on the There you go. Okay. Put there is no bridge. way. <laughs> there is no way, no way that I would have garnered all those things without his help. And some of the things, and I want to shout out Tara Bratcher, who was my principal at the time. Um, working with her, I did learn a lot, a lot of valuable pieces. After winning her trust, it took a while, but I won, eventually won over her trust. And she started allowing me to do more things in, in school, take on more roles within the building other than just the bus, the books, and testing. So I am very appreciative of that. But I had to take on a different aspect when it came to my career. I couldn't wait for her to go and promote me. I couldn't wait for her to, I couldn't put my career in just one person. So what I ended up doing, I definitely had to go to God. I had to go to God seriously. Like, Lord, now you know, I want to go to the next level. What do I need to do? Surround me with the people that I need to be surrounded with, the tools, the resources, help me so that I can elevate. That's always the, the quest. Let's elevate, elevate. So what he ended up allowing me to do, Principal Kafele, he drew me to people like yourself, where I was tuning in every week with my notebook. I still got my notebook here. Oh, my God. Yes, wow. I still got it right here. I was listening. I was taking in your advice. One thing I want to tell people that are aspiring, even, no matter where you are in life, you got to take initiative for your Promote not just for your for promotion because that comes from God, but you got to take initiative in what you want in life. So that meant by purchasing the books, that meant taking PDs, even if I had to pay out of my pocket, although we want the free because free is meant to be, but not all the time will you get the um substantial with free, not all the time. So whatever I saw that was worthwhile, that was going to feed and pour into me, I chose to uh, participate in that. But I gotta say in that journey on becoming a better AP, my whole aspect, and this is the word that the Lord gave me during my time, especially early on in um, 
my assistant principalship, armor bearer. Mm. Armor bearer ship was the word. Um, I'm say it again, armor bearer. And, and many people may not know what that means, but it is a spiritual term. It is referenced in the word. And what it is, that means to me, you work in a capacity as though you're working for God himself. Mm. You no longer see whoever your leader is in the building. Of course, you respect and you um follow protocol, but you take on an aspect as, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to work, but I'm working for you. I'm not working for this principle, that principle. I'm working for you. And when you kind of change your mindset and turn gears and think in that aspect, then your performance skyrockets because it's not, you're not really, you're not performing by yourself, but you're asking God to help you and show you. So you are blessing your leader in a, in a, in a sense, but you're doing it for God. So that meant whatever you need. I was, I can remember just as clear a day, I would meet her in our office. Okay. What's the plan today? What's the vision today? What are we going to do? And she would give me my march orders. Or I didn't even wait. Sometimes I didn't even wait for her to tell me. I went around the building because it's my house too. And I saw what needed to be done. And I took care of it. I checked on my people. I um, checked on my scholars. But uh, taking initiative, that is the key. You can't wait for people to tell you what you get, need to get done. Who does that? It's your career. Do you want to get better or not? You don't wait for people. Woo. Right? That's right. Well, you know something? I had a part two to this question and you answered it, but I'm still going to give you the question because I want I want the fam out there to hear this question. And then if you want to go whatever direction you want to go with it, but you, you covered it. And here it is. There are I, I promise you, Dr. Tillman, I promise you there are APs watching right now in real time or we'll see the video later. And these are APs that wish they were able to function within the AP capacity as you did. Mm -hmm. But instead, they're in this job that they would they work so hard to attain and now they hate it. They're frustrated. They're discouraged and, 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 and are contemplating going back into the classroom, going back into counseling, because this is not what I signed up for. I don't get to do the things that Dr. Tillman is talking about. I don't get to initiate things, create, build, et cetera. I'm doing all this discipline and, you know, all this kind of stuff, lunch duty. I'm not that AP where I have an opportunity to effectuate change in the lives of children. I may even say to shine so that others see me so that I can one day become principal. I know that person is on here right now. If they're not on here, they'll see it later. What would you say? What is your advice? Oh man, I got a word for that. I got a word for that. You still got to persevere. Leadership is work. Who told you it was going to be easy? You are going to face those low moments. We all did. We all still do. It's going to come. You're going to face people that um, are going to be one way in your face and another way behind your back. You're going to face the lies. You're going to face um, um, deceit from staff. You're going to face all these negative challenges. It's coming your way. Get ready. But when we're talking about foundation, what do you have that's grounded? You need to find out what your foundation looks like, feels like, and is like. You need to tap in. See, I have to go back to the spiritual side because that's the only way I made it through. There were times even in the AP role that I wanted to quit. But if I would have quit, I would have missed out on all these wonderful opportunities mm. that God has already shown me. I put it like this. If God came to you through his Holy Spirit and he said, he asked for you to pull down the shade, your blinds, just pull it down a little bit, move the curtain just a little bit. I'm going to give you a peek of what I have in store for you if you do X, Y, and Z, right? I, look, I had my peek. He showed me. 
That let me know right then. Suck it up. You a big girl. Whatever you're going through, I've already equipped you mm -hmm. to go through it. Work the gifts that I already give you. I've already instilled in you and you go on. And I promise you, if you endure, you persevere, you will make it through. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some examples of what I had to do. So there were times I found out that people was talk. You know, people going to talk because we all got mouths. OK. But one thing we don't have to do is chase lies. Yeah, they hurt us. They upset us. But we don't have to chase lies because the truth will always come out in the end, no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. But by me persevering, God gave me an opportunity through Dr. Malata Hill. She is now our chief academic officer in Cumberland County Schools. And I mention her because she was the first person to give me an opportunity outside the AP role in the building. We have a summer learning academy. It, most years we've had one and she allowed me to be a school-based, site-based administrator for summer learning program. And I'll never forget this. She sat us down. We had all, we had all of us had a meeting brought all of us together right before school got out mm, probably four years ago five years ago and i'll never forget what she said she said you ap's because all most of us were ap's or an instructional leader some capacity you have the opportunity to show what you can do through this summer learning program you to treat this summer learning program as if it was your school Mm. What she tell me that for? Mm. I, in the name of Jesus, showed out. He sent me the right people. We had a good time teaching and learning for those few weeks. That went into uh, my next example. So I did that for one year. The next, the uh, one summer, that first summer, I think it was, like I said, five, four or five years ago. The next thing I know, the upcoming school year, I get a call from Mary the Legend Black, Dr. Mary, I call her the Legend Black, Dr. Mary Black. She's a retired associate superintendent of Cumberland County Schools. And for anybody to know her, she is one that don't play, right? She, <laughs> she only recognizes quality and excellence. That's what I've gathered from, that was her whole reputation. Well, Principal Cafele, she contacts me one day through email around that same time and asked me, do I want to head up her federally funded program hmm. as an AP? Wow. I lost my mind. I had a fit. You're talking about on fire because I knew that God, this is test, it's test. Everything that we do is test in life. He tested me with the summer learning program as a site-based administrator. He tested me with the administrator for her program. And guess what, Principal Kefele? It wasn't just one program. It was two programs wow. that I had to run after school. This was my test. Quisha, can you have, can you hold down that AP position and do this on the side? All of it. Spectacular. I did it. Then it goes on um, probably a couple of years later after this test was passed, he allowed me to um, be voted in on Cumberland County Schools. Uh, Association for Principals and Assistant Principals, CCAP, AP. So I went in as a district representative for AP. Work that, end up winning the accolades, and then that next summer after becoming principal, well, right before I became principal, I was voted in as the first AP to be the president of that committee in its history. It's always been ran by the principal. Mm. Wow. But my colleagues, my peers found me worthy worthy to be the, pre the president. And guess what? I'm still the president. Wow. So what I'm I say all that to say, it is not bragging, but I have to show you that my life is a witness. Everything we do is a witness. 
How do we make it? Remember who's looking at you. There is always eyes on you. Your, your scholars are looking at you. Your peers are looking at you. Supervisors are looking at you, your quality of work. You can't afford to give up because you're not just giving up on yourself. You giving up on all those, uh, what I say before, those Isha's yeah. from Samson Holmes and Dogwood Circle. You giving up on them. God has already equipped you. You got everything it takes and you just got to, you got to feed yourself with the word. He said in Exodus 14 and 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. You give your problems to him. You ask him to show you and direct you and guide you. And he will. He did it for me. That's the only, the, what I want to tell people, it looks, it's like the iceberg effect. It looks easy because you see all this Fenty. You see all this Mac. <laughs> you see the cover girl. You see, you know what I'm saying? You see the polish, the outside, but you have no idea what's underneath. Mm. What I had to go through, what I had mm -hmm. to endure, how I had to look people in the face who I knew with discernment didn't like me, was talking about me, but yet grinning. I knew that it was people that's trying to sabotage and disrupt. I knew it. But what am I going to do? Give up? No, I can't. And neither can you. You got to find whatever it is that you need to do to tap into your strength, your perseverance, your diligence. You tap into it and you persevere. You get through it. It's only a moment. You know, and, and, and when, when you said all that, that last part, it reminded me. And as you as you find yourself and as you begin to shine, don't forget that you weren't always there. See, sometimes we forget. Yes, we forget. I gotta, I gotta share this with y'all. I sent this as a group text to my family yesterday. Um, I was in the airport in Newark on my way here to LA. So I needed I needed some kicks, just some walk arounds, right? Nothing to be on stage with, just something to walk around in. And I'm I'm in the store, the shoe store in the airport, and unbeknownst to me, there's a young man at the entrance waiting for me. So I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and then I turn around to go take a seat to try the shoes on. And there's this young man. And, and this is yesterday. He said, Principal Kefele. I'm like, oh, he said, I'm a fan. I got all your books. So I go to him, shake his hand, but I hug him, right? And I said, my man. He said, yeah, man, I got all your stuff. And, you know, we talked. I said, we'll ask him his name. And, and I'm saying that to say this. A lot of people, and this is just in my mind, a lot of people not going to go that extra step and embrace. It might be the handshake. It might be a fist bump. But for that young man to say to me, and I wrote this to my fam yesterday, my, my, my biological fam. I said to them, that thing moved me, man. It's not the first time it happens, but every time it happens, it moves me. See, if for someone to go out of their way to wait for me and, and I just want to shake your hand, I, I read your books, I'm part of your Saturday Academy, whatever it is, I'm here because I haven't forgot where I once was. See, so if you recognize in me, you showing appreciation for my work, boom. Because I haven't forgotten. Let me holler at the fam out there. I haven't forgot. And you can't forget. You become that big superstar, educator, leader. Don't forget you weren't always superstar educator. Okay. Okay. There was a time when you were looking up. Hoping that you would get in that position one day. Don't forget. When them folks asking you for advice because y'all know ain't nobody in this ain't nobody in the universe could say Kefele turns his back right. if, if you said that i cuss you out <laughs> <laughs> right i tell you off because Kefele be putting in some time giving advice and putting the free work out there including this saturday academy right so i'm saying it, it, which requires all week preparing for which is something that's not i got i don't have a contract for this ain't no paycheck coming right i'm saying to somebody out there 
don't forget it matters let's go we got so much to cover man i'm supposed to be out here in la doing a keynote and a breakout in this room <laughs> you sent me these five talking points and i don't know if we're gonna get through it all we don't have to principal yeah, we, we, let it flow just let the holy spirit take over it's good my wife, my wife said 100 because you got that text man <laughs> There's a there's another part to the story. I only gave y'all that part. There's another part which I that's for another time, right? Um, you said equity, and I want to put this on the screen too. Bear with me a second. You said um, equity and social justice. I'm gonna get rid of my stuff in a second. Advocate dedicated to dismantling systemic inequalities and ensuring equal opportunities for all students. So. On the one hand, I think that you're saying this is you, and then we're going to talk about some other things with that once I hear what you got to say. So tell us, what are you saying to us when you say equity and social justice advocate dedicated to dismantling systemic inequalities and ensuring equal opportunities for all students? So that comes with the story, Principal Kefele, and all those who are watching. Um, people who know me know that my firstborn, and you probably heard him, uh, Desmond, was uh, diagnosed with autism severe and profound at about two and a half uh, years of age. It was devastating. I didn't know where I was coming and going. I didn't know how to help him. He was the first of my family and my, um, at the time, my, his father's family, who had a cognitive disorder in any way, shape, or form, any disability. And we were all like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? But again, I couldn't wait for my family to tell me what to do with my son. I couldn't wait for my his father's family to tell me what to do with our child. I had to go out there and hustle and figure out what I needed to do to help Desmond, for us to help him, for him to gain the life skills and the functioning and everything he needed to live in this world. So as I told you, that EC position, that wasn't a hope, that, that wasn't a fluke, it was all in his plan. For me to become an exceptional children's teacher, work that field, learn, I take what I learn and what I do with other scholars and I teach him. So through my journey as a teacher in exceptional children, I was able to see how so many families, so many families, especially those who look like us, were at a disadvantage when it came to health care, when it came to resources in the community. I couldn't get my hands on anything. I couldn't get the help. I got to run around. It was a journey. And so when I talk about in inequalities and dismantling, all those components thereof, I mean, for the child that I gave birth to, for the ones that are my children that I teach in somebody else's building, for the families that I cry with, because we all in the same boat. It, it, Whenever you go through something in life and it changes you for the better, you'll never forget. Yeah. You'll never forget. And I can't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm a, I'm a, that's my Twitter handle, advocate. Yeah. Because that population is near and dear to my heart. I know what it takes. I live with it and I work with it. It's a part of who I am. It is my edu ministry. That's what I call my ministry in education. I'm not, my pulpit is my building. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to see children lag. I was looking at the data in the state of North Carolina, definitely in my uh, district, how many children with disabilities didn't have adequate um, adequate um, I guess they don't have the need, they don't have the supply, they don't have the technology resources, they didn't have the same type of access that the regular ed population had. That's disheartening. When they got to take the same test that everybody else has to take. Yeah. So when there's disparities and deficiencies 
right here at home, we got to do better. And so I'm definitely a proponent, an advocate for not just equality when it comes to children with disabilities, but all children, all underserved, underserved children, definitely those issues. You know, um, when I first read this, when you sent me these talking points and the words equity and social justice obviously jumped out at me. I have a book called the equity and social justice education 50. And I know that there are places where that book will never see the see, 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 see daylight um, because of the title of the book. Right. And, and, and I'll probably never be invited to those places either, but here you are a social an equity and social justice advocate. Right. Your Twitter handle, as you said, advocate underscore one. Right. So we'll put that out there now for you for you all. If you want to reach uh, Dr. Tillman on Twitter at advocate underscore one is her handle. So 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 I want you to share with us your thoughts uh, for the fam out there who want to be those equity and social justice advocates. But they're in districts where just the mention of that word could put them in trouble. Right. It could jeopardize their career, could jeopardize their employment in those districts. What, 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 what are your thoughts? My thought is small change. I know people are frightened of those terms. I know they are frightened. They don't want to touch it, especially with laws that's been passed and policies that's being drafted. But you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. It's small changes. If you know that you have... Um, an equity issue in your building, you can start there. There's a way you can draft it in your SIP plan. <laughs> There's a way you can work around anything if you want to make a change happen. Yeah. yeah. So start small. Definitely tap into community organizations. There are people out there. And if you don't have people out there, you'll be the person out there to start it. That's mm -hmm. that initiative. Mm. Don't wait for someone else to save you when you have already been equipped with everything you need to make change happen where you are. Small change. Sometimes you got to take that initiative, right? Um, good stuff. Good stuff. You know, you are. Let me let me let me switch gears here and go to this mental health champion mm. committed to destigmatizing mental health and promoting access to quality resources for students and staff. What is your message there? So there was a point in my life, I didn't give my entire story, but there was a part in my life where I started out in the mental health field. And I, I know that made an imprint on me even before, you know, my, my oldest son was born. But I have been around people with true mental health conditions, physical health conditions. And that'll change a person because it should help you to reflect on how blessed you are, that you are able to move about, think about not having to take a whole slew of medications just to function on a daily basis. So when I talk about mental health, being a champion of mental health, saying that it's okay if you have this disorder to go, first of all, I just got to say our people got, we got to do better when it comes to therapy. There's so many of us that have trauma, fears, things that we've been through that knocked us down and caused us to be bitter and hateful and mean. We got to stop that. We got to do better. Yeah. How dare you walk in a building trying to change the lives of people when you don't even like people because you don't like yourself. Mm. It's mm. time that we need to seek help. That's why God made the people. That's why he allowed us to have counselors. That's why he allowed us to have therapists because we need help. Yeah, we call on him, but maybe he's using them as the answer. So I talk about that aspect, but I just see how even in my journey, 
with my own son, how I was exposed to different people, different families on the job. And I and I served as a qualified mental health professional before North Carolina changed the definition and caused you to have to be licensed. But I get to see I was in a position where I had over 32 to 35 people under me helping me to take care of people with these physical and mental disabilities. And when you go into their houses, you see how they're living, you see the struggle that they have to face every day, it changes you. At least it should. Yeah. If you have a heart for people, yeah. they are the ones that's overlooked. Nine times out of 10, if you look at the homeless population in your hometown, they're the ones with the mental health disorders. What are you doing to help? So I have a friend, um, we call him DJ Hardy. His, his name is Mario Hardy. Him and his wife are advocates right here in our community of Fayetteville that help the homeless. So look him up. Definitely Mario Hardy. He serves as a DJ. He does it for free for most people in the schools. But advocating for those who can't advocate for themselves, mm. I'm here for it all day. Wow. Wow. It's powerful stuff. You know, um, I got I got a lot of things swirling in my head right now. As a matter of fact, before I go to my question, tell the people and, and folks, when you hear this, we're not ending. I just I just want to make sure that folks that leave early get this information. How do they get in touch with you? I'm sure that there are folks sitting there saying that Dr. Tillman would be a, a great speaker, a great presenter, workshop presenter, mm -hmm. keynoter for our conference, our, our district, our convocation, whatever. How, how do they get in touch with you to bring you in? Uh, well, I have a website, www.quishatillmanphd.com. So there on that website, and I got to shout out my daughter because she helped me create that website. Uh, Quindlin Tillman, thank you, baby girl. She uh, provided all kind of contact information, my social media outlets. There's several ways that you can contact me, even, even by phone. So if you go to the website, it'll direct you to everything you need to know about me. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Principal Cafele. Absolutely. Now, you also referenced two books. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how can they get your books? Oh, man. Ooh, you can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, and I do have a copy on hand. I have Untapped Power that we were talking about that really speaks to Black women and advocates of Black women when it comes to our superpower with emotional intelligence. There's a story behind this as well. I don't have time to tell it, but please go find this. Those of you who want to aspire to be leaders, those of you who are already leaders, you work with, it's just not for Black women, but it is for advocates of Black women. I want you to look at that. And I really want you to pay attention to the elements that I talk about, the proponents of emotional intelligence and how we already have that innate in us, dating all the way back from slavery. We've been caregivers forever. We've always taken care of people. We have it in us. So in order to be an effective leader, in my opinion, you need to have emotional intelligence. You need to tap into that empathy, which to me, like I said before, is aligned to God's word. So it is available. Untapped Power is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Put, hmm? put those on the screen again for us. Yeah, it's um available in Amazon. Ooh, I'm trying to get it where you can see Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. If you just look up my name, it'll pull it up. Also, I speak about the journey that why I'm so passionate about mental health and being an advocate and champion those with disabilities. A love that shatters barriers. It is um, the beginning stages of our journey with Desmond, my son, who's autistic, severe, and profound. He is now 26 years old. Um, we talk about the journey from the moment that he was diagnosed and the struggles and the battles that I had to go through in order to get help and um, get to get him to where he is today. Good stuff. So you all reach out uh, the books, reach out to uh, Dr. Tillman to come in and do some day long presenting or keynote, whatever it is. We're not done. I just, you know, I, I usually like to do this at the top of the hour, but but I, I forgot or or you were you were you were going and I didn't want to jump in. But um, yeah, so make sure folks 
And then um, lastly, I know we, I gave you a Twitter handle. Uh, is there any other social media? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. If you look up Dr. Q Tillman, I think it's Dr. Q underscore Tillman. If you type my name in Instagram, Twitter or X and Facebook, I'm on all of those um, outlets. OK, very and good. And I have a website. Like I said, I have a website yeah. and I've developed a YouTube channel. So I'm go. trying to explore that. I'm trying to make time for all of that as well. There you go. Good mm -hmm. stuff. And we'll do it again at the end. Um, so, so, so going back to the mental health now, um, you're a mental health champion. My question is what role do principals and assistant principals and even other levels of administration, what roles should they be playing toward becoming mental health champions? What does that look like? Because right now, let me just set it up a little bit more. Right now, I'm principal and I'm dealing with the administrative stuff. Or I'm AP, new principal or AP, dealing with, with what I'm doing. And, and it's hard, it's tough, it's overwhelming, it's challenging. And now I got Dr. Tillman talking about being a mental health champion on top of all my roles and responsibilities. What might that look like for me to become that person? That looks like that you're taking the initiative to study, to be a self-learner, um, participating in professional development, joining organizations and community um, pieces so that you can develop that muscle. Because if, if you just think about it, there's statistics that's out there that proves this point. You work with people every day and about 25 to 30 percent of the people that you work with have an underlying mental health issue that you have no clue about. Mm. In the day and time that we are leading people, we can't afford with the shortages that we got shortages in the cafeteria, in the custodial department, bus drivers, definitely in the classroom. We can't afford to overlook anyone. Understanding how to be a mental health champion will help you not only with your scholars, not only with them, but those parents that you say bust up in your school and want to show out, show up, you it'll show you the strategies even on how to deal with that. Because nine times out of 10, they're not mad at you. They got other issues that's going on. The people we serve have other issues that's going on that's way bigger than work. Life is lifing. Having that background, having some of those strategies in your tool belt is going to help you to excel to that next level and help you take care of your people as well. Important stuff. Got to be that mental health advocate. And, and you know, I think about um, during my days in leadership, nobody was talking about mental health. That, 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 that's something we started talking about it recently. And, and it has become less stigmatized, particularly for black men now. Um, back in my earlier years as an administrator in, in, in black men talking about mental health, it, you'd probably be stigmatized, right? But now people recognize, you know, if, if, if you need it, you seek it. You seek that therapy, right? You mm -hmm. seek that counseling. But as a leader, you got, you got young people in your school that have the same needs right now, as you said. And then you got their parents who have the same mental health uh, uh, concerns that they need addressed as well. So here you are, think about your, your, your just your repertoire of, of skill sets. That's gotta be one of them. Doesn't mean you're the counselor, doesn't mean you're the therapist, but it means you're a champion mm -hmm. for ensuring that those needs are being met amongst your school community. And, 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 and that's not to discount the teachers. Right. Right. Because they're the ones in the classroom who are imparting information, inspiring young people, etc. So if they're dealing with their own mental illness or mental health challenges. How is that being how, how how is that being observed if you're not that mental health champion as leader? Right. Mm -hmm. how, is, how, how is that being recognized if you're not that mental health champion within your school? So certainly make that a part of your repertoire. You know, I want to I want to go to this this next one here. Um, empowering education and leadership advocate driven to empower student leaders and teacher leaders through education providing them with the tools to succeed i got to tell you and i'm gonna I'm I'm throw i'm gonna throw a question at you on this one before before you even expound on it but i want to i want to give you this backdrop 
as a a principal and this is i was a middle school and in high school principal and and, I, and i'm gonna give you this in the basketball world we talk about mount rushmore's who's our top four all-time greatest players and those are very lively debates that, that that men and women have probably every day and it changes all the time and all that kind of stuff but i got these mount rushmore words in education and it it, it, it changes from time to time as well but the word empowerment is a part of my Mount Rushmore of word. And, and I don't mean jargon, but I mean just words that I use in education. This word empowerment for me is special, right? So a graduation season, students are graduating. I'm on the stage handing them a diploma with one hand and shaking their hand with the other. And I'm asking myself, this was my ritual, Dr. Tillman. I know that I inspired them through my leadership. So I'm not talking about the singular I, but the collective we, right? But but in that moment when I'm their principal handing them that diploma, I know that we inspired them. But I'm asking myself the question, did we empower them? Because see, that inspiration doesn't always last long. It's not always permanent, but that empowerment is. If, if, if I'm empowered, to turn the corner now and now do big things with the inspiration being at the root. So that was a ritual for me every year graduation. And then to add to it at the end of the graduation, when the custodians are cleaning up the, the gymnasium, I'm sitting in a senior seat for an hour or more, just kind of meditating reflecting on the year with those seniors and asking myself where did i get it wrong as it relates to the empowerment of these graduates because we're all inspired to graduate on graduation day but do we have the empowerment to proceed on the day after the graduation that's and that's the day that matters more the day after for me than the actual ceremony on that day so with that said, let me let me let me let me let me go to you. Um, when you use that word empowerment within the context of what you've written here, empowering education and leadership advocate, how are you using this word empowerment? What does that mean to you? So everything still equates to initiative. Empowerment apply it, it implies applying going forth. Well, what you already been dressed with, all the gifts, all the skills, all of that, you taking forth and you're taking hold of your destiny. And you're going forth and you're grabbing what's yours. To me, that's what empowerment is. Yeah. And one thing, I, like you, you met her, Marisol Lopez Willis, one of my teachers, the one who presented with me, our far, um, foreign language teacher. She is one that I can't, gotta pinpoint. Because if there's anybody in my building that's empowered to go forth, she is. She takes my critiques. She takes opportunities. And she feels, and she's told me that's out of her mouth. She feels as though I have her back. Mm. And for me as her leader, as her supervisor, her principal, to have to feel like she that she's backed by me. Now she can go and take over the world. She spoke in our, our session about different companies and different agencies. She's with Participate Learning and, and those associated with that agency coming to her. Um, Ms. Lopez, you want to do this? You want to do that? But she always comes back to me, Dr. Tillman. They want me to do this. They feel like they, they want to take this opportunity and they want to do this for our community and they want to highlight X, Y, and Z. And I tell her, Miss Lopez, you got it. Go ahead. Let me know what I can do to help you. Yeah. That's what empowerment means. And when it comes not just to our teachers, but to our scholars, my scholars feel so comfortable at this time. Most of them do. I may can't speak for all of them, but most of them feel comfortable enough to email me and say, Dr. Tillman, I want to start this club. Or Dr. Tillman, what about this? Can we do this? Or, can we have a spirit day that's this, that, and the third? They feel 
as though they can approach me and ask me, and what do you think? And gather my feedback and that I'll take their input seriously. And so when scholars do that to do that with me, if it makes sense and it fits, we're doing it. Mm. That's how you spring forth with empowerment. So I got to highlight this one group real quickly as I talk about empowering in leadership role and being an advocate. When I became a, a principal two years ago, a group re reached out to me that was already in progress, the principals who pray group. And I got to shout them out yeah. because the leader, Dr. Jamet McCahern, I am so blessed to be under her leadership as she empowers us. We mean, it's not like a sorority. It's not like girls gabbing. It is a true prayer group mm -hmm. in which we fast and pray, in which we cover our community, our county, our schools. It's not about us, but it is about overseeing with the powers that the Lord has given us, collectively overseeing our entire district. And so together, collectively, we encourage each other, we empower each other, we champion, we celebrate each other. And I'm just, for anybody out there listening, it is so important to have a tribe. If you don't have a tribe, ask God, he'll give you a tribe. He'll give you the right ones to be associated with. And so through this group, I have learned so much. I feel like I can go conquer the world because my sisters have my back. They're mm -hmm. empowering me to go forth. We empower each other to go forth. And I'm glad to be a part of that group. So I just want to shout y'all out. My PWP sisters, thank you all. PWP. Yes. And you know, you said something about having that tribe. It's... uh. Hey, somebody out there that's trying to be Superman, Superwoman, and you don't need anybody around you. Mm. It, it don't. It might work for a minute or two, but at some point you're gonna find that you can't do this by yourself. And I don't mean necessarily. I'm not talking about the leadership aspect. I'm talking about the functioning aspect, the survival aspect, mm -hmm. the, the keeping your sanity aspect. Do you have people to lean on just to have a conversation? Right. That that matters. Right. So keep that in mind, your tribe. Don't 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 push them to the side. You had your homies all them years when you were trying to get to the role. And now okay. you now I ain't got time for y'all. No, they you obviously needed them when you were on the come up and they were in your life. Mm -hmm. Now you now you so bogged down into the work. You forgot about them. Mm -hmm. Now they they, they, they got to maintain their importance in your life because that's your support. Because mm -hmm. the work, that's your that's your work family. Right. That ain't, that ain't homie. Right. right. So you got it. You got to make that distinction. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So. So let's 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 keep moving. Um, Where we at here? Community engagement enthusiast, community engagement enthusiast, engaging and collaborating with the community to foster partnerships and involvement in the school environment. While you address that, I got a question for you. Can can I as a school leader? function optimally while simultaneously detached mm -hmm. from the community? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You need your community just like you need your parents. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say is Dr. Lindsey Whitley, he is a champion. He is our community. Yeah, communications yes. guru is what I call him for coming down the street. in a few times. <laughs> Yes, yes. And so he is the huge proponent of community family engagement in our county. Mm. And so um, he allowed me to be a part of a leadership opportunity in which I was able to talk about this piece with my peers in a principal's academy that we have within our county. And so I was able to speak on this with very much knowledge because I was able who I was able to accumulate as a first year principal over 28 community partners in which the school has not had that many 
What, what school has that many? Right. For me, that was a huge deal to have that many active partners in the life of our school. So not just by myself, but with my team at work, we were able to accumulate that many. And now going into the second year, we have close to 40 people, 40 mm. businesses, community vendors, all, all associated with 71st Classical Middle School. And so when I talk about this, yes, it's definitely important to have the backing of your community. You're serving their children, their product, the best that they have to offer. You're serving them. Yeah, you got to bring them in your building. Yeah, let them be a part of anything you have going on. If you want to invite them to help chaperone a dance, help proctor, help serve the kids, be a lunch monitor, something. It's a way that you can bring the community into the life and the breadth of your school on a daily basis. And so, yes, I keep them involved. We have a community, um, I call it a community coordinator. It's a different name, but under Dr. Whitley, Lindsay Whitley's leadership, we all have an ambassador, a family ambassador. And so Dr. Um, Bryant, I call her Dr. Bryant. She's working on her PhD, but I already call those things that be not as though they were. So Dr. Bryant is our family ambassador and she comes in and she bridges the gap between our family and school. So she is a major vital role. Her role is vital to our school. That she is uh, the parent that's at the soccer game, mm. that's hanging with the other parents. They're over there at the mall. Do, you know, there she's out and about in the community with the people we serve. And so with the parents of the children that we serve. And so, yes, yeah, she speaks up. She knows what's going on in the school so she can speak on our behalf. She can go ahead and de-escalate some situations before it even get to us, mm -hmm. if you think about it. So this piece is very important and is very vital that we build these partnerships and have them in a collaborative, family-inspired um part of our school on a daily basis, not just once a month, not just when we have a big event, but invite them to be a part of the life and breadth of the school daily. Now you you can invite them. They all may not be able to come, but you put it out there. Allow them in. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's that's key what you just said. You you put it out there. Yes. Right. If 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 it's not out there then we don't have that structure for them to possibly be a part of what it is that we're doing. Right. So you got it in, in your word. Obviously, this is probably your Mount Rushmore uh, initiative. Right. Mm -hmm. You got it. You, you got to take the initiative and then let the chips fall where they may. Of course, there's got to be some goals and objectives attached to it. Right. As opposed to just putting it out there. But the first thing you got to put it out there. Right. Right. And then what's the goal and what's the plan? Mm -hmm. And then we go from there. But you can't be you, you, you can't be that island unto yourself. Right. right. It's, it's, it's that that community. They're there. You know, I, I created, which I think the world knows, um, the Young Men's Empowerment Program, Young mm -hmm. Women's Empowerment Program. Mm -hmm. And that was just based. That was community folk that I brought into the school. That wasn't us bringing in professional uh, speakers and all that kind of thing. That was us saying, hey, I need you, 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 you and you to partner with us. So now we got hundreds of men on the rolls to say, I only need you one time in your lifetime to come into this school because I got so many others with stories that are going to complement one another in order to make this thing happen that we were trying to do. So that was just tapping into the community, but ensuring that we were seen as a part of the community. We are of that community and therefore folks didn't have a problem with coming in and being a part of us and not asking us for a dime. Right. Yeah. So the community folks talking to the fam out there got the mirror up. Right. And I'm asking you, what role does the community play within your leadership? It matters. Let's go to this next one. We almost done, y'all. We doing good on time. That way I could take it down a minute, get ready for the breakout <laughs> session and then mm -hmm. go into the keynote this afternoon. Right. Mm -hmm. You um, you talked about holistic education promoter believes in nurturing spiritual well-being and integrating holistic practices into education for, for overall growth. 
what are you saying to us? So again, that's just going back to knowing your foundation. What's important to me is my spiritual belief. I just don't believe that I will be where I am. If you consider me to be on a big platform um, or superstar educator, that came out of your mouth, Principal Cafe. <laughs> I mean, I receive it, but I'm just saying. If you consider me in any of that, it's only because of God. I was brave enough to believe what he said about me. That's the difference. And so when I talk about holistic education, I do from time to time talk to my mentees and um, scholars that I mentor, definitely teachers, about having to believe in something bigger than yourself. See, we don't work as hard if we just doing it on our own. But if we think about others, if we think about the impact we have with others, we tend to work a little bit harder. So there are teachers, even in the building now, that come to me and say, Dr. Tim, will you pray for me? Can we pray? Mm. Man, do you, you know how much that made God smile? Yeah. I am what I do, close my door, let's go. Oh, come on, let's go. And we get to praying. But for them to feel that comfortable with me, to share with me the innermost part of themselves, and we take it collectively to God, it says something about my leadership. So I got to tell you this. Shout out to my superintendent, Dr. Marvin Connolly Jr. I got to tell you, he went through, he has a testimony, I can't tell it, but he went through some health concerns, some very serious life-threatening health concerns in his journey as our superintendent. But I'll never forget one of our first convocations with him. After he had his surgery, after he went through his therapy, he came back strong for us. And he stood up in our convocation and he said, to God be the glory. Mm. That did something for me. I was forever changed because my superintendent got in front of the whole district and proclaimed God right in front of them. Wow. I'll never forget it. And I thank him for it. It's a memory that will last and last. But that to me gave me permission. Yes, I'm a praiser right in front of everybody. If they don't like it, just go somewhere else. It's just, I'm not going to stop. Because it's gotten me this far. That praise, that thankfulness, that gratitude, knowing where my help come from, my foundation. It wouldn't be. And I got, and I don't even know if I said this. If I did, I'm going to say it again. Principal Kefele, to me, you are my Oprah Winfrey. Right oh now, God. I feel like I'm on the Oprah Winfrey show. Oh, my goodness. You my Oprah Winfrey show. To be on your platform. At this time in my life, it's I got to tell you, I got to tell the story, right? So I went to your institute last summer when you were in Charlotte. I was there. I met you. I gave you my testimony of how I used your practices and I elevated and this happened and that happened. And that. Now you meet people, hundreds of people on a daily basis. I didn't think you were going to remember me. <laughs> but it was okay because I had that moment in time that God allowed for me to tell you how much of an impact you have made to me. You were part of the promotion too. So from that, I'm just grateful. You know? So to me, praise God. I appreciate it. Yeah. So that's how that's that is a testimony to the work you're doing. And you're not just doing it for you. Right. I know that. And so I'm saying now that the little platform that God gave, I shouldn't even say little because I don't want to be little, Lord, but the platform that he gave me right now, I'm using it for his glory because it's not about me. Yeah. It's nothing that spectacular about me. I'm just obedient. I've yeah. learned through trials and tests and tribulations that obedience will get you where God wants you to be. Like I said, I peeked through that. He allowed me to peek through the blinds, the curtains, pull it back a little bit and just see just a little bit of what he had in store for me. If I would have quit years ago when I faced um, 
all kind of deterring factors still facing it as principal, there is no way in the world, no way in the world I could have made it. And to be on a platform like this, giving my testimony, talking about um, my children, the children I have served, my life story, it means a lot. So when I say She froze. I hope she uh, unfreezes. Go in and um, hopefully you can hear me. Go in and come back. Go out and come back in, Dr. Tillman. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me text her. And then I'm going to holler at y'all while she does. Um, let me get her hey. here. Oh, here she is. No, you, you froze, but you good now. You good. I don't even know where I left off. I don't even know because I was on a roll, but it's yeah, okay. No, no, you I think you you were probably right there at the end, you know. Well, so. I was saying that um just don't forget where you come from, know where your help comes from. Now I have to be based, I'm spiritually based, and I believe God, I believe everything his word says pertaining to me. So my family picks in me a lot. They always talk about, well, you know, we humans, so I have good days and bad days too. But whenever my husband notices, he'll say, do you need to pull your Bible out? Do you need to watch that gospel video? See, he already knows. <laughs> he already knows what it takes to bring me back from letting those negative emotions take over. I can't afford it. I got too many people waiting on me, looking for me to help them. Yeah. So it's big. It got to be bigger than you. That's bigger. the only way you're going to put the work in. Bigger than you. I love it. We got one more. But before I do... I, I would be remiss. Um, I forgot to tell you all, though, you know, the veterans, they know, but but the folks who may be new to me, you you don't know what I, you may not know what I'm wearing or or maybe you just thought this is what I pulled out the closet today. I got I got to tell you what I'm wearing and uh, something that you said triggered me to re reminded me to say, let me let me let me share that. This is the Kansas City Monarchs Negro League team. Those of you who've been rocking with me, you know that this, these are the jerseys I wear every Saturday. But those of you who came on because they were listening to you today, you wouldn't know. But this is April. So every April, all I wear is Jackie Robinson attire, right? So Jackie Robinson, we know him as a Brooklyn Dodger, but we don't necessarily all know him as a Kansas City Monarch in the Negro Leagues. He played for them for one year, 1945. Then he got drafted, but he played in the... Um, in the minor leagues for the Montreal Royals in 1946, which was a minor league team of the Brooklyn Dodgers. And then the Dodgers pulled them up to the May, called them up to the majors in 47. So for the month, I wear the Negro League jersey. I wear the, the Royals jersey, Montreal. I wear the Dodgers jersey. And then I got this little special jersey that I don't want to spend time explaining to you, but it's also a, a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn jersey. But tune in every every Saturday and I'll be able to explain that special jersey. Right. It's very special. It's a little bit different from all the others. But that's what this is about. So I'll be keynoting in a Negro League jersey. Anytime I speak on a Saturday, everybody might be in there suit and tie, whatever they're wearing. But I'm, I'm, I'm showing up on that stage in my negro league jersey that's what i do that's what if it's on a saturday that's when i wear these i honor the negro league players on saturday mornings with this platform enough there let's go to this last one i've been kind of waiting for this last one doc um this was probably the one that, that resonated with me most empathy is key pathway towards a more empathetic school culture for leaders so i had this question i wanted to throw at you and this is why this one was so special for me, why it jumped out at me when I was putting together my my thoughts. I, I, I wrote a note here. What is what is a leader's role in helping teachers to empathize who with with children who whereas the teacher may have only a superficial, trivial understanding of the children culturally speaking? So I want to teach. I want to I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. I want to connect with children. But but frankly, culturally speaking, in terms of understanding that child, mm -hmm. I'm not from that side of the tracks. I'm from a different side of the tracks. so that my world, you may as well call a different planet. I don't know the children here, but now I'm in this school with these children. And as I remind folks all the time, we don't teach content first. We teach 
children first. So with that being said, what are your thoughts on that teacher? Because we know that teacher exists all over America. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good question, Principal Kefele. The thing of it is, it's tied to that equity piece, that social justice. And so it is a topic that they is hit or miss. And so we as leaders have to do a better job at explaining, at showing, at modeling what it's like to nurture a child from whatever culture it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we put on a Black history program every month. Yeah, we do um, Hispanic heritage recognition. We do all of those things. We do all of those things. But it's not enough. We have to tap into a better way of showing them. Now, I, well, in my circle, I have my friends who come up to me. They're not Black. And they'll be like, well, what does that mean, Dr. Tillman? But see, I have that type of demeanor where, you know, it means this. And I'll just break it down to them, but it's in a comfortable setting so that they'll understand what it means. We have to do more of that. We have to have a avenue in which people can really be all their authentic selves and talk about what it looks like. Talk about how to care for them. Talk about the jargon. Talk about the slang. Talk about that bad really means good or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have to provide that. And we can't be so touchy about it. It'll never get fixed if we are. Yeah. So building a, a more empathetic school is something that definitely I challenge, I champion. And I spoke about it at the conference when I had the session with just myself. And we just talked about how empathy, like I told y'all before, Empathy lines up to God's word. It's all about love. It's all about trying to gain the other person's perspective. Yeah. And realize none of us are perfect. We all mess up. We got to give each other grace. Mm -hmm. We got to. And I, and I just want to, I got to continue to shout. Every time I think about something, I think mm -hmm. about people. I want to shout out um, Dr. Christina DeGaudio. When I became principal, she was the first secondary principal to reach out to me and offer mentorship. She reached out to me. She knew what I was going to have to go through as a first year principal. Mm. She knew that. She said, Quisha, you're going to be a part of the middle school mafia. I love that. I should have put that on the shirt. Yeah. But the middle school mafia. Yeah. So again, that empathy is key. I have another mentor, Dr. Shanessa Fenner. She knew. She mentored me even in the elementary setting. She knew what I was going to go through. She knew how I had to go through and, and still provide grace in front of people who didn't understand my vision, who didn't know I already went to God. He told me what to do. He told to direct y'all if we do x y and z da, 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 da. but how do i communicate to people who have already dug their heels in the sand have their perfect way of doing things how dare you mess that up yeah but you know what i still had to love them anyway Love them anyway. I had to put myself in their shoes. I am a brand new principal. They're used to seasoned principals who their entire life was that school. Nothing else. They live, breathe, eat 71st classical middle. Here I am, am ambitious, young, energetic. Well, I'm not that young. Thank you, Lord. 47. I just turned 47. Thank you, Lord. But the point of it is, he gave, equipped me with all this energy, all this positivity, all that. I just want to love. I just want to give it to everybody. Yeah. But everybody ain't taking it. So how do you show empathy in a role like that? You continue to be who God has told you to be. You don't waver from the vision. And then things like this, being on the um, uh, Cafe Le Oprah show happens to you. I didn't ask for this. And I got to tell the story, Principal yeah, Kefele. Yeah. After we met, I didn't finish. After we met in December and, uh, well, in the summer, 
I saw you in December when I was getting an, another award from North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals yes. Association, NC Popper, right? <sighs> so happy. I got to see you again, live and in person. Well, you know, later on, you reached out to me. And it's like, Doc, I need you on my show. Okay. I was sitting on this since December. <laughs> and if anybody <laughs> knows me, it's hard for me to keep good news down. Well, God said in this season, silence. Move in silence. When they see you move, it's already be done. Because he didn't want people to think it was me. He didn't want people to think that I'm going out here seeking these. It's coming to me in the floods and it ain't over. Yeah. So with all that said, with all that. Well, hey, hang on. You missed, you missed, you missed one. What, what part? So then I had, I had a form, one of my former principals who was Whitney Houston's principal scheduled for today. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Tell, and, tell and then he, he couldn't, right he now. couldn't make it. You know, he and he's in, he's still an active principal. He's 85. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he, and he's still a principal. He's Whitney Houston's. He was mine back in the set early, the, the mid 70s. So when he when he called me and said he couldn't make it, it's a million people I could have called. A million. That's right. See, now I'm about to shout. <laughs> I called you and I shout. said, I know it's short notice, but can you do it? <laughs> when did it happen, Principal Cafele? Last week. That was like Tuesday, right? Something like that. It was and early I, in the week. Yeah. So I wasn't supposed to be on your show until no. June. That's right. But me, out of all the... See, that's what I'm saying. When you walking in God's purpose, people, <laughs> he'll make things like that happen. You ain't got to ask for it. You ain't that got to... You just do the work he told you to do. I'm a witness. He'll change everything in your life. I have this feeling right now, uh, Principal Cafe. I've been sitting on, I've been talking to my PWP sisters about it, but I have this feeling of urgency, like somebody happened, somebody happened, somebody happened, and I can't shake it. Mm -hmm. So I know this is a jumping off point to what God wants me to do next on a bigger plan. How can you not give him glory behind that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to cool myself and compose myself but i just i mean I love if this it. thing is real to me ain't nobody playing around here yeah i love it i love it i love it <laughs> look here let's let's go to our i call them my bam impact questions these are 21 questions uh one sentence answer or one word whatever's whatever's best appropriate for you at the time and um but but if you find yourself throwing in a comma then you know it's gone too long, right? So these are boom, 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 boom. So uh, here we go, 21 of them. Let me clear the screen. There we go. Let me, let me clear that screen too. Um, and now we got now we got your name up there. There we go. Number one, is education on the right path for underserved children? I think we're moving towards. We have advocacy groups that are really trying to do better. In that and that regard. Can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown, and other underserved students? Yes, I'm hopeful. Does Dr. Quisha Tillman's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Absolutely. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? I thought about that. I wanted to be a psychiatrist at one time, so mm, I'm on the fence. <laughs> Why do you continue to do this work? Because of the Isha's out there. Because of the Isha's. That's why I do the work. What fires you up within the work that you do? Uh, Like-minded people getting together. Collaboration. What do you particularly love about the work you do? Ah, the children. Oh, my God, the children. They're the best. What do you dislike about the work you do? <clears throat> oh, <God. laughs> um the me menial task menial mm. task the the um the busy work of the principal yeah what has been your greatest victory in this work thus far 
Oh man, the greatest victory is building a quality team. Building a quality team. Love it. What was what has been your greatest mistake in this work? Mm. Moving off energy and not thinking things through. I can be impulsive sometimes. Mm. So impulsivity. What has been your greatest challenge in this work thus far? Mm. The greatest challenge is who directing change. I love it. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Yes, I lived. <laughs> <laughs> Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Yes, I am. Growth. Who inspires you in your work? Oh, my God. How can I say? Um, all my mentors, um, Dr. Jane Fields, Dr. Melody Chalmers McLean. It's a host of others, but there are so many good people out there that's under the leadership of Dr. Conley that have pulled me along. And I just thank God for the favor. Good stuff. What are you reading right now? Could be a book, blog, article, tweet, anything. Uh, right now, I'm following Joe Sampolino. I think his name, Joe Sampolino. Joe Sampolino. That's my Sampolino. man. Sampolino. That's it. He's been on here. One minute to walk. One minute walk yeah, to work. One I'm minute following walk. him too. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's on rotation right now. One minute walk. Go crickets. Yes. Go crickets. <laughs> uh, he would be glad to hear that. I'm mm -hmm. gonna let him know. Um, what book would you recommend to our viewers? Hi. Too. I would recommend an untapped power and a love that shatters barriers. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? Oh, that's a good question. It's I'm open at this point. I'm open to whatever God wants me to have the next for the next level. I'm open. Yeah. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? Mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God's time, and you can't beat it. It may seem like it's a long time, but the wait is so worth it. I love it. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Oh, my God. Get your tribe. Find your tribe. You need to do whatever it takes to get, build that encouragement. You need help. Seek help. There's, out there help. There's help out there. Y'all heard. I hope y'all heard that. And last one, if Dr. Quisha Tillman was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Oh, my word would be perseverance. The okay. definition is no matter what comes your way, no matter what challenges you face, continue to press forward and put God first. That would be the definition. I love it. I love it. I, man, I, I love everything about this session. Before I thank you, hey, folks out there, you know how we thank our, our guests. I just put a sample on the screen. Hit us up with your favorite emojis. The family, you already know, and that's why Jacqueline put them up so quick. In fact, Jacqueline put a second one up there. Look at all that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank I've been God. trying not to look at them because they get me distracted and I want to read. But yeah, thank yes. you guys. Thank you yes. so much. Jacqueline from Texas, man. Hey, hey, y'all hit us up with those emojis. I see them coming. They've been coming. I see them. Keep them coming. No, that's the way we thank our um our guest every Saturday morning, afternoon. Oh, they still coming. They still coming. Hi take Jacqueline down so we can see each other. I brought my emoji with me, my, my little miniature bat. So you, you hit it out the park. Grand slam. Every Yay. time you came to bat, the bases were loaded and you hit it right out the park. So just a powerful session. I'm, I'm so glad we got this technology working. We were going to do this regardless. It we just were going to do it. I told you what it was. But uh, we were going to get it done because, like, people know that, that know me with this platform. Don't nothing get in the way of this. No nothing stop it. Nothing. We get it done. So once again, uh, tell the people how they can reach you, how they can okay. how they can book you and, 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 and your reading material. 
Yes. So everything, well, most things that you can find about me will be listed on my website. Um, again, it's www.quishatillmanphd.com. And there you will find my materials, my latest books. You'll find out how to access my journals. I have a collection of journals because I'm an avid writer. And so um, I love the journal. So I created some that I hope people will like, just like I do, um, who like to write. I have um, contact information, all my social medias, everything is listed. I even have a Google number. So however, wherever you want me to be, contact me and I do the best my uh, best of my ability to be there. There you go. And the summer's coming. So, you know, those of you doing summer uh, activities, summer professional learning, all that kind of thing. You got Dr. Quisha Tillman now as another option. Let me uh, let me thank you. Appreciate you. This was powerful. I'm glad that we we made this happen today. This was this was a great way to start April, the new month of April. Yes. Stay, stay with me. I'm gonna do my rundown. Stay there so we can talk off camera. Hey, fam. Thank you for being here every week. I'm always appreciative that you're here. Like I tell people all the time. I say it all the time on the road, and I say it on here. I do a lot. I get paid to do what I do. I get paid good money to do what I do. But it doesn't match. It doesn't equate what I do on Saturday morning. This is my the fa my absolute. Anyone that knows me knows this. This is the absolute favorite thing that I have to do each week. There's nothing that supersedes this. This is this is it. This Saturday Academy for multiple different reasons. We'll talk about it another time. But this is it. So every time I see you all see these numbers, we still in in in, in terms of peak numbers, we're still at five hundred seventy four. And that means that we've had thousands that were on throughout because everybody's not on at the same. Th these are the ones that's on right now in real time, 572 people. But in terms of the people that have been in and out, we're, we're, it's, it's thousands of people that was on this morning. So I appreciate you all for, um, as they would say in the in the church, for seeing it, not robbery, to be with us on Saturday mornings. Next week, I got two of my guys. Uh, week 207, we got Dr. Stephen Peters. I'm sure many of you heard of him. And we got Dr. Mark Wilson. They'll be on. Uh, we'll be talking. I don't know what our topic will be yet, but we'll be talking leadership. I'll tell you that much. Uh, next Saturday, I told you, until Josh, until you tell me otherwise, we calling it this the uh, uh, Super Saturday. We got Sean Hurd at 10 o'clock, Facebook Live, all of these, Create and Educate 1030, which Dr. Sheikah Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor, and then myself at um at 10 55 every saturday morning these are all eastern time we call it super saturday and then when josh gets back on board on sundays we call it uh the fantastic four join me in houston at the school leadership institute with principal Cafele. two days of just leadership it's not a conference where there's different breakout sessions it's just me right if we're gonna go from nine to four we we talk at lunchtime for those that want to talk leadership we talk after the fact we talk during breakfast it's just leadership 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 so come on and join me um and and, and as dr tillman says she was with us she was with us last year so we're gonna have a good time in houston and then while you're at it go to my website and, and register and then go to the uh, black educators rock i'm a part of black educators rock that's why i'm not promoting other conferences i'm i'm, I'm on the board i'm like I'm like in the mix, right? So Black Educators Rock is 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 mine. I, I I take ownership of it. So I want you to join me there, July 18 through 21 in Houston. You can go to my website, principalcafele.com and register. My books, but particularly AP 50, the Assistant Principal 50, the Aspiring Principal 50, the, the um, Principal 50, is my school a better school because I lead it and my newest one, the Assistant Principal Identity. Just go to Amazon. Put my name in the Amazon search and you'll see all the books that I have in print right now mm -hmm. and you can order them there. And then lastly, your diet and your exercise and whatever virus precautions you got to take, make sure that you do so. Right. Uh, eat right. I'm trying to do it all the time. I, I cheated the other day. I don't mind telling you public. I went right to Carvel and got me an ice cream cone. Now I don't do that. I don't do that. And I did it after exercise. And that's the crazy thing, man. I, I have to walk past the place when I'm outside, when I, when I walk Jersey city and, uh, and, and I got to walk past it to get home. I'm like, man, I want to go in there. So I went on home. I said to my wife, I want an ice cream cone. She said, well, go get it. I said, now nah, I'm gonna eat lunch first. I ate lunch. And then after lunch, I went right to Carvel, got me that cone and it felt it was cold outside. And it wasn't like it's warm. I'm in Jersey. It was cold, but I had, I just had to have it. Then I, then I felt guilty and went to my diabetes meter and checked my numbers. <laughs> 
I was still good though. I was like 113. That's like dynamite, right? So that's real good. So, but make sure you're eating right, get your exercise in, and and make sure COVID-19 and what other whatever other viruses and the diseases that are out there, make sure that you're taking care of yourselves. And then we'll see you next Saturday. Make sure you visit the uh, YouTube channel though. If you missed any of the 206 sessions and uh, scroll through the topics, make sure you check out my YouTube shorts. Make sure you check out my series called Pro Becoming a Professional Speaker. Make sure you check out my series called Becoming a Best-Selling Author. It's all free. Just giving it to everybody. Take it. Take it. I'm a best-selling author. I gave you all my secrets. I'm a professional speaker. I'm giving you all my secrets. I'm, I'm, I'm a former principal. We're giving you all the secrets, right? We doing it for free. Nobody better not ever come to me one day. Fele be hoarding the information, but I'll cuss you out. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I shouldn't be saying that because some people are like I don't like when you say that. Y'all know I'm being facetious, but I but I will raise one eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Other than that, y'all have a great week. Have an extra. I'm acting like I ain't got a keynote. I'm supposed to be doing. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary. <laughs> Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Pop that fist back. One, two, three. Bam. <laughs> I see y'all next Saturday for week 207 at 1055 Eastern. Pray for me with this keynote, man. I got to do a breakout right here in this room. And then a keynote. It's called the Council of Black um, Administrators. I plan to bring the fire. Pray for me. You got it, Principal Kefele. I love you. Peace. <laughs>